Silovi Bisono and I am a PhD student at School of Psychology. I'm supervised by Professor Winifred Lewis and Professor Yolanda Zetan. And this is part of my PhD thesis. So I'm doing my thesis on a different understanding of religious identity. And uh, this study on religious extremism is a part of my project. So uh, in this study, we propose a multidimensional model of uh, a multidimensional model of religious extremism, and we use this construct to explain the willingness to participate in religious collective action. Okay, so uh, I'm going to start this presentation by defining uh, religious extremism as we. Uh, ever heard about it so uh, the main definition of religious extremism is that uh, it's normally defined as a kind of deviation from the mainstream and the unwillingness to compromise on coordinates of one's political ideology because of religious dogmatism so uh, according to this point the main indicator of religious extremism is normally is the rejection for the universal values such as democracy and then uh, equality and human rights and so on uh, according to the religious dogmatism and it's also defined as this approval of mainstream practices uh, applied in the money in, in in many countries and also uh, this religious extremism is associated with religious violence so uh, the thing they anticipated by many countries about the growth of religious extremism is that because this pattern of extremism can attract uh, the citizens of particular countries to uh, to leave their country and to join the the uh, war and to join the combatant practices in in the other countries on behalf of their religious groups so um, my study takes a uh, context in Indonesia, so this is the most major, the most majority Muslim country with more than uh, 260 million population, especially in the current political context, there is a group of this actually not only religious groups, but also, I mean, according to the more democratic situation, there are there is a significant growth of many social movements and some of them are religious movements and focusing on these religious movements uh, we can see that there are kind of division on the group opinion that they, that they fight for like uh, some groups they tend to uh, fight for uh, more modern values like the acceptance of democracy like uh, or more li liberal uh, religious values like the equality and the struggle for justice but uh, some religious groups they uh, tend to fight for a more more conservative uh, dogma like uh, in this case i'll focus on the uh, on some groups who advocate uh, constitutional change related to uh, the implementation of comprehensive sharia in the in the current uh, political system. And then, uh, because there are many religious groups uh, who grow, especially after uh, the, the political reform of 1998, and we see that the political dimension or, or the political domain is not only the focus that they have. So they also have the other focus, not only in the political dimension but also the other dimension such as uh, a very strong effort to purify the theological beliefs of the religion and also to purify the ritual practices and this effort uh, uh, and this efforts lead to a uh, more negative relationship uh, between the groups and also to other peoples and then uh, according to that situation we propose uh, what we call as the multidimensional model of religious extremism uh, by adding some dimension of religious extremism not only on its political dimension indicated by the radical change in their political agenda like in this case uh, we focus on the on the effort to uh, to implement the legalization to implement the comprehensive 
uh, Islamic law or, or Sharia in the, as the national constitution. But in this multidimensional model, we add some other dimensions such as the theological dimension because uh, there are some groups who saliently who emphasize their group narratives to this dimension and the main characteristic is that they, their narratives always contain the, the, the aggrieves of God. So for example, when there is a, a natural disaster that happens, so these groups, they create a narrative to blame people because of their sin and then the God is angry and the God uh, give them this natural disaster. So this kind of narrative is used to attract the people to join to their groups and uh, for their uh, interest. And also uh, the additional indicator that we put for this dimension is there is a very strict meaning on the, on the core uh, tenets of Muslims, which is jihad, because this term is, uh, is, is a very important term according to the Muslim word and this term contains a very large meaning which is basically means as uh, striving so when we use a very large meaning to interpret this word we can say that when when people or when when muslims they they strive for their uh, job or they strive for their study for example we can also include those defini those those uh defini we can also include them in the definition of jihad in this large meaning. But also, there are some groups who put a very strict and very limited meaning of jihad as the only holy war, and they use this meaning to campaign uh, their attraction for, uh, for what they call as the holy war with the particular enemies in the particular countries. And then the third dimension that we used for this multidimensional model is the social dimensions. So this is, uh, we use this term to, to uh, capture the groups who evaluate many disadvantages perceived within the body of Muslims and then they attribute, and then they blame the out, the out groups, uh, any out groups for these perceived disadvantages. In addition, they also have a kind of tendency to judge others by using their in-group specific norms. And the, the fourth dimension that we also use is the ritual dimensions. So this related to uh, some different school of thought well, within the Muslim groups. So, uh, and this, these groups who focus on this, on, on this ritual dimension, the extremism in the ritual dimension, so they have a very strong effort to purify what they called as the forbidden innovations attributed to the other Muslims who conduct uh, normally rituals. And these rituals is normally kind of combination of, of, of uh, basic rituals in, in the Muslim world and the local traditions. So these groups, they have a very, uh, a very uh, strong effort to purify and then to reject this kind of practices. And sometimes they also use a kind of violence to eradicate this kind of practices. Uh, so in the study one, we do the scale development to measure this religious extremism and we develop 25 items and we use the previously published Islamic extremism scale and the support for violence as the external criteria. And then, so firstly, we applied a confirmatory factor analysis to examine uh, those 25 items. And unfortunately, to, to get the fit model, we only have the 11 items that represent those four dimensions. And then when we apply these uh, multidimensional dimensions to predict the Islamic extremism scale, we found that uh, the Islamic extremism scale, the previously published Islamic extremism scale, uh, was predicted by three dimensions, except the ritual dimensions. And then for the support for violence, it was predicted by political and social dimensions. So the thing that we can get from the results is that uh, we can justify that there is an extent of the scope of religious extremism, not only in the political dimension, but also in the other dimension. And 
we can also justify that uh, related to the violence, it's not only predicted by the political dimension, that the other dimensions can also predict this violence according to the study or the finding. And then to follow up that study, we conducted the study two, and in this study two, we, uh, we collected the data from the participants and then uh, we choose two groups of participants that, we can, that can be divided into the supporters and the opponents of the legalization of Sharia in the context of Indonesia. And we use uh, the case of Aceh, the one province in Indonesia that apply this comprehensive Sharia and, and we use the indicators applied in Aceh to divide these participants, whether they support or they oppose this kind of practices in the level of the nation, in the level of the nation as the national constitution. And we applied this multidimensional religious extremism measure, as well as the peace, peaceful and violent collective action to support or to oppose this legalization of Sharia. And then, uh, according to the analysis, we found that there is a, a significant difference on, on all dimension of religious extremism between the group who support and the group who oppose the legalization of Sharia. So the group who support the legalization of Sharia, they have a higher religious extremism in all dimension that we measure. And then, uh, this religious extremism, all dimension of religious extremism also uh, correlated with uh, the peaceful collective action amongst the supporter or to support the legalization of Sharia, but it didn't correlate, it, it was not correlated with uh, peaceful collective action to oppose the legalization of Sharia. And then focusing on the violent collective action to oppose and to support the legalization of uh, Islamic law or, or Sharia, we found that all dimensions have a significant correlation with violent collective action, both to oppose or to support the legalization of Sharia. And the magnitude of the correlation is not different between uh, the supporters and the opponents. And then to follow up these results, we conducted the multiple regression analysis focusing on the supporters and the opponent groups. And then, uh, because in the opponents group, we didn't find a, a, a valid model, then we only focus on the supporter groups. And in the supporter groups, we found that political dimension is uh, significantly uh, predict the, this peaceful collective action and also the other dimensions, including theological and ritual dimensions. So it's not. Uh, really consistent compared to the previous studies. And then uh, focusing on the violent collective action at the supporter groups, the groups who support the legalization of Sharia, we found that three dimensions can predict uh, the, the violent collective action to support the legalization of Sharia, except the ritual dimension. And then at the opponents group, uh, we found that two dimensions significantly uh, predict or associated with uh, the violent collective action to oppose the legalization of Sharia. So uh, we found that political dimension can uh, consistently predict the willingness to participate in collective action, either uh, in peaceful or a violent way, and both to uh, support or to oppose the legalization of Sharia. So. Uh, according to these findings, we found that religious extremism is manifest not only in the political dimension, but also the other dimensions. And uh, because uh, according to the descript descriptive statistics, we found that violent collective action uh, is very low compared to the peaceful collective action. And then uh, we also conclude that both groups, they tend to avoid the use of violent form of collective action to support their group opinion related to uh, the implementation or the legalization of uh, Sharia. And then the different dimensions of religious extremism might themselves be differently associated with peaceful and violent forms of collective action, including within the, within the same opinion groups. So uh, according to the results, we conclude that 
being extreme in religious identity is not only related to the political extremism, but also uh, the extremism in, 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 in the other dimensions, and it might be related to the other goal, uh, not only related to say is the political power, for example, but also the other uh, purposes or the other goals. And yeah, uh, it is especially related to uh, the effort to purify or to standardize the religious beliefs and with a very small attitude for the differences or for the, for the possibility of the different norms or different beliefs to appear within the, within the religious groups. And uh, the extreme beliefs uh, do not always lead to stronger support for violence, but also they uh, develop a more peaceful action to support their group opinion or to, su or, or to support uh, their group. So we can find this pattern because uh, in the discussion about religious extremisms, the scholars normally they divide these extremisms into violent and non-violent ex extremism according to the content of, uh, according to the according to the way they uh, they the way they used to achieve uh, their groups uh, purposes or their groups aim. Uh, yeah, I think that that's all uh, from me. Thank you very much for the attention and I will be happy uh, for any feedback.